uh, hi, I'm Dr. Abhishek. Let's continue with what where we ended last time about the X-rays, the basics, and the beyond. Last time we discussed what are the colors which are going to be producing, uh, what are the different colors in which we look at X-rays, what are the different objects, and why the different objects produce different colors on the X-rays. Now today we are going to be discussing about a very important thing that I call the X-ray views. Now what is a view? View refers to the relative position of the patient with that of the X-ray. Uh, I know it's technically sounding a bit difficult, but I'll try to make it easier for you. But before that, the first thing that we want to know is how does a normal chest X-ray look like? So this is a normal chest X-ray. This is an X-ray of a patient who's been in a PA view. What is PA view? We'll be discussing later. This is how the patient stands in front of the X-ray machine. This is the X-ray tube, the partial part of which you can see here. This is the X-ray plate. Now see this patient is standing with his face around the wall. He's facing his back is facing the front side and his face is facing the wall. The X-rays are traveling from here to there and the image that is being produced is this. Have a look at his arms. His arms are abducted. Abducted means they are by his sides. They're not, he's not standing like this. His arms are partially abducted. There is a reason why we abduct the arms and we'll be talking about that later. But first, let's see wow, how does a chest X-ray look like and why does it look like one. So, when we're doing a chest X-ray, let's look at this patient. The place where the X-ray strike first is the skin and the clothes that the patient is wearing. You can obviously remove the clothes, but skin is the first place where the X-ray strike. So after the skin, the next thing that the X-ray strike are the rib cage. Now this is a rib cage of the human being. Now lean and thin patients can obviously palpate; they can touch and feel the rib cages as well. So the first thing that the X-ray meets outside the lungs and once it is penetrated to the skin and the subcutaneous planes is the ribs or the bones. So these particular shadows which you can see on both the sides, this, these horizontal shadows which you can see on both, both the sides which are looking like white. Now why do the ribs look white? We've already discussed because they are hard structures. Hard structures are responsible for stopping the x-rays or they're responsible for absorbing the x-rays and that is why they're responsible for producing a color of white on an x-ray film. So that is explained that on both sides, we can see some ribs which are directed along the chest wall bilaterally. What happens after the x-rays move through these ribs? Through these ribs, they encounter our lungs. Now, what is lung? Lung is a tissue. Lung is an organ, in fact, which is filled with air inside. And it is the principal area where lung, where air transfusion or air transmission takes place. So the lungs are filled with air. And anything which is filled with air should ideally produce no color on an X-ray as we discussed last time because air does not allow any hindrance to the, to the passage of X-rays. So these things which are present, so this thing which is present like black interspersed between the white colored ribs is the shadow of lung. Now one more thing, one more observation that you can make is that this color that we can see is slightly much brighter or whiter as compared to the air outside the lungs. This color which is present here is much blacker. You can see this air which is outside the chest cavity is much black as compared to the air inside the lungs. The reason why it happens is because lungs do not only consist of air. They are organs which consist of soft tissues, blood vessels and numerous connective tissue things as well. So they are going to be looking black because obviously air is the major component but Air is not the only component. That is why they'll be producing a shade which is going to be slightly brighter or slightly whiter than air for all practical purposes. Now, all what you also what you can see is that these lungs are connected on both the sides to a central airway which is called as trachea. Now, trachea is a windpipe. We can all palpate it in the central part of our neck. We can see that there is a thing when we talk; it it's, it it resonates. This is the trachea. Trachea is the principal organ which is responsible for transmission of air, for the inhalation of air and it transmits the outside air into the lungs. It's just like a tubular structure which goes on and divides and bifurcates into two parts to supply the two lungs because it also consists of air, so it should also look black. So you can see there, central you can see, if you can appreciate, there is a black shadow which is present around the central part. So this black shadow, which is again not as black as the air outside, is the trachea because it is also being overlapped by this central part of the vertebrae. This is the spine, which is the central part, which is uh, the bones that we can see. Then next thing, what we see, the central part of the thoracic cavity is our heart. This is our heart. 
Now, why it is white in color? Firstly, because it is a muscular tissue. Secondly, it is all filled with blood. Now, blood is a fluid as we discussed last time. Fluid will be producing a white color. But blood is much denser as compared to a normal water. So, it should be whiter than normal fluid. And secondly, because heart also consists of uh, musculature, it is expected to be looking much whiter than normal effusions which occur here or there. So, this is how normal chest x-ray would look like. The ribs are going to be along the periphery of the, uh, of the chest x-ray. They are going to be looking white because they obstruct the x-rays. The lungs are going to be seen as radiolucent areas or maybe black areas because they allow the air to pass through. Trachea would be a central tubular structure be looking black. It looks black because it principally contains air. It doesn't contain any, any fluid or any other solid soft tissue. Lastly, the heart. Heart is going to be looking white because it is muscular tissue filled with blood which is fluid which is responsible for obstructive majority of the x-rays. And last not to, no, uh, not to forget the soft tissues which are present around the corners. Now these are nothing but this is the fat and the muscle layer which is present around the chest wall. It is going to be producing a color which is less whiter than the bone obviously because it contains, consists of fat and solid muscular tissue and it is going to be whiter as compared to the air because it is definitely denser than air. So this is how a normal chest x-ray looks like. Now coming on to our principal topic that is the radiographic views. So we have a conventional PA view, uh, an AP view and a lateral view. So what is PA, what is AP and what is lateral? PA stands for posterior anterior view. Posterior anterior view means uh, P means posterior, posterior is PJ, that is this is our posterior part. A is anterior which is our anterior part. So the direction of the x-rays in a posterior anterior view is uh, going to be from posterior to anterior part of the body. On the other hand, in an AP view, the direction of the x-rays is going to be from anterior to posterior part of the body. Lateral view we will discuss later on, which is not much required right now. So, before we go ahead and discuss about the a, uh, AP and the PA views, the first question that, I, that comes into our mind is, we have discussed the patient should be placed somewhere between the x-ray tube and the x-ray plate. But where should the patient position be actually, actually be? Should he be placed close to the x-ray tube? Or should he be placed somewhere in the midst of the x-ray tube and the x-ray plate? Or should he be placed at the far end, just close to the x-ray plate? So now let's try to understand that with a simple experiment. Now this is a three-dimensional view of a football. Now footballs can be considered similar to uh, the x-ray particles or x-ray x-rays that pass through the x-ray tube. Let us assume that this is the area where the x-rays are being generated. That is, this is the x-ray tube. And on the far side of the corner, as we can see here, the plate is going to be placed where the x-ray images have to be made. Now, if we place the main object or the main obstruction here and we play the foot and there are all footballs lying there, then majority of the footballs that are going to be hit are going to be deflected here or there and there will be very few footballs which have a, which might have a chance to reach along the far side of the corner. Similar is the case with the x-rays. Majority of the x-rays is going to be deflected here itself then a very few will reach there and the image will be produced will be suboptimal. There will be no sharp image will be produced because the amount of the x-rays will be very less. Secondly, most of the x-rays would have died out. They might, that means they would have lost their energy. Considering the second example. Now consider if this particular object that is the human being obviously in this particular case is placed here somewhere. What happens is the footballs are going to strike with full vigor and they would have a better chance of reaching the far end of the corner that is the goal in this particular case or the x-ray plate. So this experiment shows that we should place the object which has to be imaged as close to the x-ray tube sorry x-ray plate where the final image has to be made. Now, making it uh, easier uh, to, uh, to make it far easier, I have another experiment. But let's we'll, but for that we we'll have to go to the dark room once again. Now let's see what happens. This is my hand, and there is a light source which is placed anterior to my hand, and this ball is actually acting as the X-ray plate. This light source will act as the X-ray tube. It can be considered analogous because X-rays and light rays behave the same as we discussed previously. Now I am bringing my hand close to the X-ray tube or the light source, we see the image is looking far blurred and it is much magnified on the wall. Now when I bring it back, now you can see when the distance between 
the image between my hand and the wall decreases that is the x-ray plate decreases and my hand is placed far off from the x-ray tube source or the light source the images of my hand which are being obtained that is the shadows of my hands are far clearer they look much better and then they are not even magnified so this example again see this is the difference that you can see then this particular case the images the shadow this is obtained is much sharper on the other hand when i am bringing it far interior that the shadow breaks and the image which is formed is much less sharper blurred and even magnified so it proves that whenever we are imaging an object the object should be placed as close to the x ray plate and as far for, as possible from the x ray tube as possible so come welcome to the light again so continuing with the same experiment you can see this is that object which is placed far from the uh, what you call is wall the image is magnified blurred when i place the same object close to the wall you can see the image is not magnified it's the image is bright and image, the margins of the images are very clearly defined so now we are clear with one point that while doing an x-ray the patient should be placed close to the x-ray plate and not the x-ray tube Having said that, now coming on to the X-ray PA view. Now PA view is called PA view, as I told you, depending upon the direction of the X-rays with respect to patient. In a PA view, the direction of the X-rays should be such that they should be leaving the tube, hitting the posterior aspect of the patient, that is posterior piche, and then they should be coming out from the anterior aspect of the patient and finally forming an image over the x-ray plate which is placed anterior to the patient these are the two images of x-ray of how we do a conventional x-ray pa view you can also see that while doing an x-ray pa view we are abducting the arms on our sides that is we are actually extending the arms uh, on on both the sides So this is a diagrammatic representation of a PA view in which the X-ray tube is generating the X-rays. The X-rays are hitting along the posterior part of the rib cage. And once they hit the posterior aspect of the rib, few of the X-rays are absorbed and they produce an image. This image is taken upon the, uh, uh, taken up on the X-ray plate, which, uh, which, uh, uh, which works as an acceptor of the X-ray films. Now this is on the other hand the x-ray AP view. Now you can see the difference in the AP view. AP view is usually not done. The, the only reason we do AP view in those patients who can't stand, who are uh, morbidly obese or who cannot move around or who, those patients who are hospitalized. Because AP view has got certain disadvantages. We are going to be discussing about the disadvantages of AP view or PA view in our later sections. But this is how we do, a, a, do an AP view. The patient is lying supine. You can see the x-ray tube is placed overhead the patient so that the direction of x-rays is such that uh, the x-rays are traveling from the anterior aspect of the patient and while they are traveling from the anterior aspect of the patient they hit the anterior chest wall first and they come out from the posterior aspect of the patient. Now you might be assuming where is the x-ray plate. Now in these cases the x-ray plate is placed just deep to this table or at times it will, uh, the x-ray plate in while we are doing x-rays in emergency situations or the patients who are in wards, the portable x-rays, we place the x-ray plate directly behind the patient's back to, uh, to make the x-rays. But usually they are uh, not preferred x-rays for few disadvantages. What are the disadvantages? Uh, let's discuss the pros and cons of x-ray PA and AP view and when we do both of them. So this is a diagrammatic representation of an AP view in which the x-ray tube generates the x-rays, passes through the anterior part of the chest wall, which consists of sternum, the anterior ribs, and there is the x-ray plate which acts as the receiver of the x-rays and it also forms, it is also the plate which forms the final image of the x-ray. So first thing that we want to discuss is scapula. What is going to be the difference in the scapular outlook on a PA view and an AP view? So first question is what is scapula? I think you both know this is the PA view we before talked about and this is the AP view. Scapula are these two bones which are located along the posterior chest wall. All of us can actually palpate these scapula. They are located here at our back. They are responsible for producing a hinge joint, uh, joint between the clavicle and this particular posterior bone. Now, this scapula, while uh, this patient is uh, abducting his arms, these scapula are riding on towards the sides as you can see. This is uh, the image that has been taken.
This is the image that has been taken from an X-ray PA view where the patient has abducted his arms. Now, what does abduction do? Abduction causes scapula to rotate externally. That means scapula blades. Usually, you can palpate when a patient is lying this way. The scapula are in a horizontal position. But when we do it like this, the scapula tend to move away from the chest wall. That is why scapula do not overlie the lung fields. On the other hand, if we want to place our hands by our sides, like in our AP view, these scapula are going to come like this. And once these scapula are going to come like this, they are going to be covering maximum part of the chest wall. So now look at how the, these scapula are going to be looking on an X-ray PA and the AP views. So for simplicity, we have both X-ray PA and AP views. These belong to the same patient. Now let's see this particular view in which this, this is the medial margin of scapula that you can see here. On the other hand, in this particular X-ray, you can see scapula is almost overlying the entire thorax. So it's quite easy to deduce that this is definitely going to be a PA view because in this view, patient can abduct his arms and in the process of abduction, the scapula are separated from the central part of the thoracic cavity. So we have a better visualization of lungs. On the other hand, in the PA view, AP view, the scapula are overlying a major part of the thoracic cavity. So if you want, if somebody says, you, if you want to look at, a, at the lung condition or any lung pathology in a chest X-ray, which view are going to prefer? Obviously, it is going to be an PA view. Why not an AP view? Because in an AP view, these bones, bony shadows are going to obscure not only subtle, but sometimes major pathologies also. So whenever you have to have a good look at the lungs, always order an X-ray PA view rather than an AP view. The next thing that we need to uh, look at is the heart. So there's going to be a definite difference in some properties of cardiac shadow on PA as well as AP views. Just to refresh, this is the PA view. Patient is standing with his uh, back facing the X-ray tube and his face facing the wall. On the other hand, this is the AP view in which the patient is lying down. The X-rays are first touching the patient's anterior part and coming from his posterior part. So now coming on to why X-ray chest AP and PA view will have different cardiac morphology and contour. First, we need to understand how does our heart lie in our thoracic cavity? How does our body work? Our heart is not located in the central part of the cavity. Our heart is located far more anteriorly. Anteriorly means age. The, this, uh, what you call as the posterior part is being occupied majorly by the spine and the vertebral column. So when a patient is lying in two ways, in this particular case, a patient is lying with his spine anteriorly. What that means is, if we consider that this is the X-ray plate and the X-rays are coming from here. So this makes it a PA view. And on, in this particular case, heart is lying far anteriorly. The X-rays are going to be coming in the same direction, but this is going to be an AP view. So let us assume the first situation. What will happen in case a PA view X-ray is made? These uh, images that are going to come, the X-rays, X-rays are going to be moving like this. Now, in this particular case, you can see from the X-ray tube, the X-ray move in a diverging direction, and the final image is going to be made on an X-ray plate. Now, as I told you before also, that while producing an X-ray with my experiment of hand and torch, that the image is best produced if the object is placed as close to the X-ray plate as possible. In this particular case, the heart lies in PA view clo closest to the X-ray plate. So we can see there is going to be a bit of magnification, but the image is going to be much sharper. And the size of the heart that will be predicted on an X-ray chest PA view will be almost similar to the true size of the heart. On the other hand, as we can see in this particular case, on the other hand, if you're doing an X-ray AP view where our heart is lying anteriorly, these rays are going to be much more divergent. And as a result, the image that is going to be produced is slightly going to be larger as compared to the true size of the heart, which we also call as apparent cardiomegaly, which is a false cardio, false impression of cardiomegaly. Secondly, 
as the same experiment that we did with our hand, the images of the hand or the of the shadow of our hand were blurred when we are moving it away from the X-ray plate or the wall. Similarly, the edges of the heart or the cardiac shadow margins and borders will be blurred on an X-ray AP view as compared to the X-ray PA view. So now, what we have learned from the past two slides, then I think uh, it's going to be clear that in an AP view, because the heart is far away from the X-ray tube. The image that is going to be produced of the heart is going to be slightly larger. That is called as apparent cardiomegaly. The margins of the heart will not be as sharp as compared to an to a PA view. Now, why this happens? Because in a PA view, the heart is physiologically placed closer to the X-ray plate and far from the X-ray tube. So coming on, uh, coming on both the things, first thing is the scapula. So in case you have got to have a better look at the lung fields, we should have a PA view because the scapula obviously go away from the lung fields as well as for the true estimation of the cardiac size, for looking at the cardiac margins, for looking at the cardiac pathology, PA view is far superior as compared to the AP view. So now coming on to the x-rays, we have two x-rays of the same patient as we had last time, the x-ray PA view and the x-ray AP view. Now, we have already discussed about the scapula, which are overriding in this case scapula air and uh, the scapula far, uh, what you call as uh, outside the thoracic cavity in the PA view. Now coming on to the cardiac borders, now you can see in this PA view, the cardiac borders are very sharply demarcated. On the other hand, you can see that the interface between the lungs and the cardiac shadow is not well demarcated in an AP view. Although the difference is very subtle, but there it still exists a difference. Second important thing, look at the cardiac size. In this PA view, the cardiac size is slightly lesser as compared to this AP view in which the cardiac size appears slightly larger. Although there is not going to be a lot of difference in the cardiac size, but there is going to be a subtle difference and this is going to make a huge difference when we will discuss about the cardiothoracic ratio. Cardiothoracic ratio refers to, uh, it is an objective parameter for cardiomegaly, which we will be discussing later on. So, the two things that we have learned about is if we want to look at the lungs, the lung parenchyma is at, uh, much better appreciated on PA view. The cardiac size is better evaluated on PA view. Cardiac margins are sharper and much better evaluated on PA view. And in all those three parameters, AP view somehow doesn't suffice as compared to the PA view. So AP views has its own uh, limitations, but it is usually done in those patients in which a PA view is not possible, like those patients who can't stand who are hospitalized, who can't move away, patients who have fractures of lower limbs, severe backache, or those who are having some other morbid conditions. Having discussed the two things, now we are going to discuss the third thing that are the ribs. This is again PA view and AP view. Before we go ahead, I would like you to know how, how are the ribs placed in our body. This is the x-ray of the chest that you can see. This is a 3D image of our chest wall in which you can see that the ribs are somehow oriented in such a fashion that the anterior aspect of the ribs are more obliquely just like these fingers. And when we are moving this entire video posteriorly, we can see the posterior or the back side or the hind side of the ribs are more horizontal. As you can see, the anterior ribs, they start becoming oblique from the lateral aspect. And as we reach the posterior, the back side of the ribs, they are located and they are oriented much more horizontally. So look at this particular x-ray. In this x-ray, we can see that the ribs are located. The ribs are located more horizontally. So these ribs which are horizontal on either side are actually the posterior ribs and not the anterior ribs. When I was a resident, I always used to think that these are ribs which are most prominent, so they must be the anterior ribs, but no. These horizontal ribs are the posterior ribs and if you can continue with this, if you can draw the ribs along the entire continuity, you can see that these ribs arch 
in an oblique fashion and they further become come anteriorly on both sides so this this in this part of the ridge which is more oblique and it is not well appreciated on this particular x-ray is the anterior aspect of the ribs now why i'm telling you this i'm telling you this because in x-ray pa as well as ap view the first part of the x-ray to hit the body as far as ribs are concerned in ap view is the anterior ribs and in pa view is the posterior ribs so the part of the body which will get the x-ray first will produce a better or sharper image as compared to the part which receives the x-rays last now let's see this by an example So this is another uh, another view in which I am showing the posterior ribs, which are more horizontally inclined as compared to the anterior ribs, which are these are the anterior ribs, which are more obliquely inclined. So coming back to the X-rays again, this is the PA view, and uh, this is the PA view, and this happens to be the AP view as we discussed before. Now in a PA view, the posterior ribs are going to be seen much better because the posterior uh, posterior ribs are going to be the ones which are going to be hit to hit by the X-ray uh, X-ray what you call it X-rays first. On the other hand, the anterior ribs will have a better outline and a better margin on an AP view. So considering this, can you even appreciate the anterior ribs cortical outline in this particular X-ray? It's very hard to appreciate. Now compare it with this particular X-ray in which you can see the sharp cortical outline of the ribs. So the anterior ribs are seen much better on a AP view, and obviously the posterior ribs are going to be seen equally good on both views, but slightly better on PA view. Second most important thing: while we do a PA view, as I told you, we ask the patient to abduct the arms and stoop forward. So what happens is while the patient is stooping forward, the ribs become much a little oblique as compared to the normal AP view, in which the patient is just lying this way, in which he has got no maneuvers over his rib cage or the chest wall. So in a, in a PA view, you can have a slight oblique appearance of the ribs, which may or may not be picked up. It's a minor point, but you can remember it just for the sake of remembering. But for looking at the anterior cortical outline of the ribs to look at subtle rib fractures, we still rely on AP view, which have a better inclination of anterior ribs and which give us a better, uh, 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 what you call as with better visualization of anterior, this anterior rib fractures. So now we have discussed three major points. First is the lung fields in which PA view stands much better as compared to the AP view. Second is the cardiac morphology including the cardiac size and the cardiac margins which also are better looked at a PA view than AP view. Third thing we have discussed about is the ribs. The ribs uh, both the things have their importance. The AP view looks better at the anterior aspect of the ribs along with small subtle fractures. PA view gives a gross morphology of the posterior ribs and the ribs are slightly more obliquely seen on a PA view as compared to the AP view. Now, last and uh, the most important, not the most important, the least important point is the clavicle. Now, as we see, this is a PA view in which the patient is abducting. The, everything comes on abduction. When we are abducting the arm, see what happens. Everybody of us can palpate his clavicle. Clavicle is a bone which is at the collar bone, which we can see which comes from here, goes obliquely upside and it attaches to the scapula. This is the, uh, this is the clavicle that we are talking about, which is attaching to the scapula. What happens during the physiology of abduction? When we abduct, this shoulder blades move up, but at the same time, our clavicle moves down. Secondly, while we do a PA view, we ask the patient to stoop forward. What will it do? If the lateral end of the clavicle comes down and we stoop forward, the clavicle will become more horizontal. As you can see in this particular PA view, the clavicle appears more horizontal. And on this AP view, because the patient is lying and he cannot stoop forward and he, he is lying in a neutral position. So in this neutral position, this clavicle will obviously have a sharp angulation as compared to this one in which they are going to be more horizontal. So if, uh, if the clavicles are having an oblique angulation, it is more likely to be in an AP view because in a neutral position, clavicles are much higher. While in stooping forward posture as well as in a PA view when we are abducting our arms, the lateral, that is the side ends of the clavicle, they come downwards. As a result, they have, more, have a more horizontal appearance or a horizontal inclination on a on a PA view. So finally discussing clavicles will be more 
horizontal on a PA view, uh, horizontal on a PA view, while they are going to be more obliquely directed on a AP view. So now we've discussed the major points as far as the PA views and the AP views of the chest are concerned. Finally, summarizing them and weighing the pro and cons, uh, if we're going to consider the PA and the AP views. So ribs are going to be oblique as I said, AP would be more horizontal, but anterior cortical outline will look better on AP for small fractures, you can look, you can rely on AP view. Coming on the scapulae, as I told you, they, they overlie the thorax when doing an AP view because patient is lying supine, he doesn't have the opportunity to move the abduct his arm so that the scapula can be moved along the lateral aspect. On a PA view, the patient uh, on a PA view, they will not overlie the thorax because the patient is abducting his or her arms. Third thing, heart size. Heart size will be invariably apparent cardiomegaly on an AP view. We discussed it why and how. The cardiac morphology is going to be better, be pick, going to be better picked on a PA view. And last, the clavicles, they are going to be more horizontally oriented on a PA view and they are going to be more obliquely oriented on an AP view. So with this, we come to the end of this particular video section, which was based upon the different views, the AP views and the PA views with the difference. We are have, we have left with the lateral decubitus views and the lateral views, which will be discussing the second part, the next part of the section. We will be also discussing the next part about the airways, the lungs and some basic common pathologies. Thanks for watching.